I recently found out that there's a language called Ebonics. Mm-hmm. And I've been using all this, all this, all this time, and mm-hmm. I didn't even know. You know, like <laughs> me talking right now is like Ebonics, but it's like it's me learning that. It was mm-hmm. me learning, uh, you know, how to say certain stuff, how to talk. I would just mimic the kids that were already there, mm-hmm. and um, it was also it was also mainly uh, I, I want to say shame that I was African. Now let's let's jump now to you're in the United States. So uh, you said you're eight years old when you came here. Yeah. Talk about like those first couple of years like you know was there any culture shock was there like a huge adjustment Mm. do you remember like you know yeah what what was that like first coming here culture shock oh man that was wild um because in africa in the refugee camps you know it feels like we we could be ourselves because we were around people who are who were you know who look like us who talk like us Mm -hmm. and i come here i didn't think there was black people here to be honest bro because we ain't had no tv yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like the, the TV we had, it was like a generator and would, they would just play like uh, Indian movies mm-hmm. and also okay. like, you know, white movies like mm-hmm. uh, uh, I know Honor Schwarzenegger, uh, Sylvester Stallone, those type of movies, like those action movies my dad loved. Mm-hmm. He used to go crazy uh, for those. Uh, anyways, um, but when I come here, it's like, whoa, there's black people here. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, that mm-hmm. was that was a question. That was a shock to me. I'm like, anyway, there's black people here because I didn't know about the history. Mm-hmm. I was eight years old. I didn't know nothing. Um, and also, it was like, but the biggest thing for me was was my parents telling me that I have to be afraid. It was almost like they were like, you have to be afraid because they were afraid. So it's like it's in a sense of like, I remember I couldn't go outside by myself. Mm-hmm. I couldn't play in the yard by myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't go a lot of places by myself. I was eight years old. I'm like, I remember I remember back home, I used to be out until 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. On, on New Year's Eve banging, banging drummers with the, with the rest of the people who were like older than me. And they were like... And then I would just go back home like dark, and I was like five, six. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I used, to, I used to walk, I used to walk myself to school like two miles mm-hmm. uh, to like to my school. But now it's like I couldn't even, you know, I couldn't even go outside with mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, another thing they told me is beware. Oh man, this is gonna sound so not good, but it said beware of like black people here because I don't know where the notion came. I don't even know how they got access to that information, but they was told like they're dangerous people. Mm-hmm. Like black black folks are dangerous people. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't know, and I didn't even know how my mom like heard that, but she told me that. Mm-hmm. She's like, the, the black people here are not, they're not like us, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I didn't, at the time, I, <laughs> I didn't know that years of mm-hmm. oppression and racism mm-hmm. and, you know, being kept mm-hmm. at the margin of society would push somebody over the limits. But it wasn't even the just, it was just like the stereotypes they have about, you know, black folks here. Mm-hmm. So that's what it was. And yeah, it was just, I just had to adapt quickly in terms of like, I had to, I remember uh, learning English, putting, putting in ASL and just like, you know, studying every day, just like to get my, you know, to be able to ha- hold a basic conversation with somebody, but that's needed though. Uh, so yeah, but it's like, it's one of those things where that was, that was one of the things like welcome to America type of thing when I, uh, when they told me about the black people here and I didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. And I didn't understand like why, you know, mm-hmm. why like somebody would say that. Mm-hmm. And then um, what else? I remember being suspended because I brought a knife to school. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, <laughs> but that's the thing. I was it wasn't to harm nobody because I used to bring my I used to have like I used to make my own knives when I was a kid and I would bring them to school mm-hmm. like in Africa and they mm-hmm. didn't care. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, well, put your knives away, Dennis. I'm like, oh, I bet. And then, <laughs> but not here. I can't. Yeah, I made my own knives and I brought them to school and it was like, you have a knife. That's a weapon. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My dad be my ass that day, bro. He did. <laughs> he did. He did. He said, you can't do that. I'm like, all right. <laughs> mm, okay. All right, then. So now, let's say a few years have passed now in the United States, and now you know people instead of being Tanzanian or you know East African, you're now black. Yes. And so, like, that's a, a, a lot of friends who I've met. I had to kind of get them ready to come to the United States to understand that mental shift. How things have to change. And, you know, it's like, yes, you are from this tribe and you speak this language, but once you come to the United States. You know, you just categorize over here as black. So, like, talk about that a little bit. Like, you know, having to re-identify or, like, how you have to change, how you look at yourself or just, you know, navigate through, you know, the United States. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you've thought about that extensively, I'm not sure if you've thought about it or, like, if you had to learn how to be, you know, whatever this thing is called blackness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah, I definitely had to learn in in a sense of, um, I remember when I first went to, uh, it wasn't, it was prim, prim, uh, primarily black, but it wasn't, you know, 
Mm -hmm. uh, I literally went to school on the north side. Mm -hmm. So Howard Kennedy, uh, that's where I went to school at, elementary school. Mm -hmm. And then I remember, um, you know, I just, I just had to learn how to fit in. It, uh, the biggest thing was fashion. I remember like begging my mom to buy me Jordans and she didn't like, I told her the price. She was like, no, <laughs> like, I will not buy you those shoes. But everybody had them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, so it was one of those things where I had to learn how to fit in and how to talk. And then I, I recently found out that there was a language called Ebonics mm -hmm. and I've been using all this, all this, all this time. And I didn't even know, you know, like <laughs> me talking right now is like Ebonics, but it's like, it's me learning that. It was mm -hmm. me learning, uh, you know, how to say, certain stuff, how to talk. I would just mimic the kids that were already there. Mm -hmm. And um, it was also it was also mainly, uh, I, I want to say shame that I was African. Yeah, so there was always a, a little disconnect there, even though we're black, mm -hmm. even though I'm black. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I know where I'm from. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I go home and I change up quick. Yeah. My language, mm -hmm. my, and, you know, how I talk, my mm -hmm. body language. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I change, that, that changes. Like, mm -hmm. like, as soon as I leave school, mm -hmm. I adjust myself. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I come back to school, I adjust again. See, mm -hmm. so yeah. it's like for me, that's what it was. Um, I just I always felt I always felt a disconnect for sure. Mm -hmm. As from from the from the black people here, from the uh, uh, you know, from my African mm -hmm. people. So it's like, but also I also felt a little bit of shame on my side, on my end of like being African and not. Mm -hmm. um, but recently, I, I had to learn to like just accept like not accept but like celebrate like hey i'm different mm -hmm. not diff <laughs> different but more like i'm african and i'm proud of that like mm -hmm. i wouldn't change it yeah i came mm -hmm. from shit, but i i feel good like my journey was was cool like mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't change a thing mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because they used to make fun of me. they used to be like african booty scratch i'm like i didn't even know what that was from until i watched boys in the hood bro mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm like oh that's where they got it from mm -hmm. okay so yeah i mm -hmm. saw that shit. Uh, <laughs> I used to give me. I remember that somebody called me that like, we had to fight, bro. Mm. Uh, yeah, we tussle. But no, that, that's what it was, man. It was mm -hmm. just that, um, you know what I'm saying? When I was out, like, I would just, I wouldn't even say I'm African. I would just say I'm black. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then, like, you have an action. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm African. Mm -hmm. Until when they notice that, then I would say it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now, though, I would notice, like, in uh, recent years, we'll say the past, Four, three, you know, two years, I definitely noticed a shift as far as like how we relate to our brothers and sisters who do have like their roots from the continent. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's kind of, you know, because of pop culture, because of, definitely you know, culture. the recent rise and, you know, black positivity, you know, natural hair, you know, us like merging, you know, different genres of music, you know, like even Afro pop, you know, stuff like that, even with Black Panther, you know, with it, you know. Um, and so I was wondering, like, have you noticed a shift as far as like how you look at yourself now? I have, and it was mm -hmm. all because of that. Mm -hmm. right. That was crazy. Yeah, the fact that you brought up all of those, uh, you know, factors that, mm -hmm. yeah, those did heavily contribute to me mm -hmm. being more positive mm -hmm. uh, and you know more self accepting about my my own my own background, where I'm from, mm -hmm. and the country that I'm from, mm -hmm. and it just me more accepting of. Uh, Mm -hmm. of it all especially when black panther came out i was 18 mm -hmm. and i remember just you know wearing the wearing a dashiki actually not even a dashiki my my phone on african clothes mm -hmm. that i you know mm -hmm. my mom had made and just going to go see all my aunties mm -hmm. yeah yeah because yeah, it was like oh we're finally getting representation in the mm -hmm. media type of thing mm -hmm. even though chat with bozeman is from here but yeah. you just feel mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm like okay wait right. wakanda mm -hmm. that's close to africa mm -hmm. even though it's a fake uh, it's a fictional place but you know, yeah it's it's uh all of that all of that and uh, also hearing um Burner Boy being played on like mm -hmm. American stations and mm -hmm. hearing more Afrobeat mm -hmm. uh, grooves and rhythm being incorporated in the mm -hmm. in uh you know was the mainstream music yeah mm -hmm. that 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 helped mm -hmm. a lot I'm like okay so it is cool to be African okay bet mm -hmm. why not let's mm -hmm. get to it <laughs> there we go there we go.